everyone and welcome back to my channel. So as promised, this is just after I've given Ari his makeover, which you saw yesterday. And I said that I would show you guys a little few clips of me riding him the next day, just to give you an idea of kind of where he's at with his training. He's obviously a complete baby baby. He's been sat on for about six weeks. So I know that you guys are really interested to see what I kind of do with them at this age and how they progress. So this is gonna be a really quick, raw video just to show you some exercises that I'm currently doing with him and yeah just like how he's kind of progressing so I'll show you the exercises I've got set up in the arena right now Okay, so one discovery that I've made with Ari is that he gets incredibly bored very easily. For that reason, I've been trying to keep schoolwork sessions as interesting as possible and also making them really short. He probably does about 15 minutes in the arena, just because otherwise he doesn't really hold much retention after that and it's really pointless. It's literally, there's just no point going round and round in circles. He's getting bored and thinking, hmm, I don't like this and I'm just getting frustrated. So about 15 minutes our sessions are and I've got a selection of poles set up. Firstly, I've got this kind of triangle formation. I basically have like a fun feature in the middle of the arena each time he comes out and it changes just because that keeps his brain interested. So today's one is these little triangles. This is really good for straightness because you have to try and aim for the points, which is actually really difficult, I've noticed. You can do it in walk and trot. You could canter through on, on an experienced horse, but I won't be on Ari. And yeah, it's just a little bit different. It gets him thinking where he's putting his feet. So big fan of just setting up a fun kind of thing in the middle of the arena, coming at it from any angle. That's the first one. Okay, so the next thing I have over here, just some run of the mill, very simple trot poles, not raised. These are just good for kind of rhythm. They really help. You can vary the distance on them, but at the minute I've got them kind of his stride. As he progresses, I'll make them shorter and longer so that he learns to change his trot. But for the minute, he's just got to get comfortable going over poles like this. So that's why they're there. You'll see I have got the mini poly jump blocks there because I've been doing so much raised pole work in walk with them recently. So they're there to do another horse after. Last but not least, I have my poly jump cavalettis down here. So this is introducing him to raised trot poles. For that reason, I've gone ground pole, then two raised poles, then another ground pole. So he's gonna find this a lot easier to read when it starts on the ground, because that's where they tend to hit the kind of raised poles is over the first one. So think of it like a placing pole, the one being on the ground, and then he's got two raised ones to kind of fiddle over, and then he can finish over another ground one. So I can do it both ways. It's basically just developing on the green pole work exercise. Last little thing to mention, which I love to do with my youngsters, is have a block in the corner like that. Can you see it? <laughs> so I find all babies are a bit afraid of going to their corners, but we obviously want to teach them to go into their corners because it helps massively when you're doing dressage and jumping and for getting them around your inside leg. So a physical object, it's not too close to the corner. You can work on gradually pushing it closer and closer, but a physical object for them to actually bend around and to kind of visualize makes it so much easier. So I've got one in this corner, Whoop, where is it there? And one in that corner there, just to practice getting into my corners. Right, let's go and get Ari. Okay, here we have that handsome boy. The mane's still a little bit, still a little bit wonky Ari. You're gonna grow into it, but he does look a million times better. You literally look like a horse now, as opposed to a little pony. He says, Mom, don't leave. So just to give you guys an idea of how much Ari's done in the lead up to this, his schedule is kind of one day on, one day off, um, but sometimes he's having two days off. So he hacked, then he had a day off, then he did a little bit of in-hand pole work yesterday, and then today he'll do like a 15 minute school session, then he'll have a day off and then probably hack. And that's kind of his week, his week done. But like I said, sometimes he won't do the in-hand work. He'll just, um, just have another day off. Just people wondering, I am still being extra safe. I'm wearing my champion body protector, but managed to find 
a coat that fits over it. You can actually hardly tell. It's a lovely Glazen Gordon one that Mum had for Vlogmas. But yeah, very nice. Would recommend if you like to wear a back protector but also like to wear a coat at the same time. Problem. Come on, good boy. Good boy. Oh, good boy. We're very close now in the camera. Good boy. Good boy. It's all right. Whoa, whoa. Stand. Good boy. Good boy. Oh, well done. Come on. It's the thing with babies. You never know what you're going to have to practice in any given section. Session. No, I didn't really want to do mountain bike no. practice today. Are we not going to lie? <laughs> Losing the light. Yes, Good it is size, isn't it? So, a little bit of mounting practice off camera work because I had to hold his head. I think he's fed up with Megan after the haircut. So mum kind of hit it on the head there. Oh, also, hello guys, this is voiceover Meg. So yeah, Ari was a little bit kind of grumpy at this point. He had obviously been messed around with all day. He'd been given a haircut, which he didn't think was a vibe. Um, so yeah, he was just a little bit stroppy and I think that's why I kind of had that first problem getting on. Oh, brake test. Um, like I say in the video, I've never had any issues with him, but it is so, so common. So what I did is I actually got on and off three times and just Lovely. between each time I did a little bit of walking around um, and I just had mum there to hold his head and he was absolutely fine and he's been fine since, which is really good. So you can see here, just having a little walk round popped him over those poles because I could just feel him getting a little bit bored. I discovered this really fun way of going through those poles, which was good. And you can kind of instantly see when he's doing the pole work, he concentrates a lot more. Whereas when I'm just walking around the outside, you can see he's a little bit fussy with his head. He's kind of dipping his sort of nose a little bit. He obviously is so green, he doesn't know where to kind of put his head. And uh, naturally, you can see he's got a really sort of nice head carriage, but that is quite a difficult place for a horse to hold his head. So I think all of this kind of bobbing around is just a reflection of the fact that when he is in that sort of frame, it's obviously hard work, so he kind of has to dip in and out of it. But, you know, completely normal for youngsters, and I just kind of focus on trying to keep my hands forward first trot I always just pop him around the outside see what I'm working with see if he feels like he's going to explode or anything this particular day he did feel a little bit sort of hotter off my leg than normal um, yeah. but I didn't feel I didn't feel unsafe or anything on him I just thought I'm just gonna pop round until I feel like you've settled down a little bit and before I introduce Bad. anything but you can see he's actually going really sweetly one thing I will note is you can see quite a lot of sort of chomping on the bit. He's currently in a loose ring sweet iron snaffle with a lozenge. Um, but I'm actually speaking to a bitting specialist just because I want to make sure he's as comfortable as possible. So yeah, I might be changing his bit around, but I always, always, always start my youngsters in a snaffle because I think there's absolutely no need to start them in anything more. And if you train them properly, you'll sort of have a, a horse in a snaffle for life, which is how pretty much all of mine are, other than Naughty Dee Dee Cross Country. She has a little Waterford snaffle. So, just trotting round here. You can see he's a little bit bored, so I'm kind of thinking I'm going to have to introduce some poles fairly soon, because you'll see, once I do, that is where he starts to concentrate. So, if I've, I've edited this properly, there we go, over the poles. And instantly, you can just see his kind of demeanour changes a little bit. He's got something to focus on. And he does, yeah, he does sort of knuckle down a little bit more when he's got the poles to go over. So at the minute, I'm not going all the way up to the end of the arena, just because, like I said, it's a 15-minute session. I kind of want to get the most out of that, so he doesn't need to go all the way around the arena to come round to the poles each time. But that was really sweet. I think watching this back, I'd say that I could have just slowed him down a little bit there. 
you can see using my little corner block there and excuse the lack of zoom but <laughs> there we go through the triangle and this is so cool i did not realize oh i'd be able to do that but look how perfectly that striding works i was so buzzed when i went through like that and uh, yeah actually did it with some of the other horses so you can see an improvement on the straightness here just coming down and doing the same thing a second time oh that is something i would say with babies is repetition is kind of key they do learn so much here, just an example of how important it is to give them a little walk break. They get very tired very quickly, so make sure you're giving them regular walk breaks. So I just wanted to include that there. So now we're going over the raised poles again. Just went over the green ones to make sure he kind of knew the drill. And it did catch him a little bit off guard. He was going a little bit speedy. But again, it's such a good learning process. Like, I kind of just leave it up to him to decide. And you can see he really learned from that first time going oh, he really through. He picked up a lot more the second time. Good so that boy. was really, really nice to see. Good boy. He's just so much better when you're occupying him. Yes. Yes, he can't see the point of just bumbling around, can he? No. Yeah, because he doesn't understand, like, aids to get him to do any lateral work. No. He just thinks that the only thing there is to do is to do the pulse. Slow down. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Oh, it's a bit quick. <laughs> I want him to like be able to make the decision, but equally I guess the card leader can completely down to him. Good boy. Good lad. <laughs> So he had a little walk break after that and then I popped him back up to trot straight over the poles because I know it gets him to concentrate and then ask for canter. Now you can see that was a bit delayed however Ari did have a bit of a habit of bucking as he went into canter so I don't mind if we have a transition like that obviously it's going to be something I work on in the future but at the minute to have a transition where he doesn't explode that's absolutely fine. I can I can deal with it being a bit delayed. So there we go, round our blocks. Surprisingly balanced into the corners, and I do think the blocks really help that because it gives him something to kind of bend around rather than going, you know, a, a little bit rigid. Now here is a little trick. Cannot remember who taught me this, but if you've got a horse that really shuts down in the downward transitions, whatever transition you're doing, whether it's, you know, trot to walk or canter to trot, so helpful to have some poles and do your transition just before the poles and it really keeps them sort of going forward gives them something to work on rather than just shut down so here you can see on the right canter we struck off on the wrong lead honestly completely my fault you could kind of see i didn't prepare well enough for the transition and then i was actually asking him on the straight which is it's hard for a, a horse to do even if it's balanced so just came back to trot, re asked on a circle where he's got a bit of a bend, and you can see he popped straight back onto the right lead. And a really nice canter here. Like, he's got such a lovely canter to sit to. It does make me very excited to jump him. Again, going around our little blocks, had a little shorten of the canter you could see there for a tiny stride. And again, he just felt a little bit here. I was trying to get him over those poles in the middle. Um, but I couldn't quite make the turn, Idea, so no that was a bit left. annoying. However, he did keep going forward and then <laughs> just keeping him occupied again, letting him know that he doesn't canter and then just stop the session straight away. So do a couple more poles and you'll see here I just ask for walk. Again, you can see the tendency where he just wants to completely stop. So I keep his brain going, send him over these poles just so it never completely finishes the session on a downward yep, transition. Perfect. Right, so that is session over with Ari. Bit of a mishap at the start with the mountain block, but we did overcome that in the end. We just had to get mum holding his head. So that made it a lot easier, but sadly couldn't do that and film. But we did a bit of that practice and then that did kind of annoy him <laughs> for a bit of the session. He was a bit cross to start with. Um, but as soon as I started introducing like the pole exercises, he did switch on a lot more. So it's just understanding his kind of brain He's not one that you're gonna like drill in the school and he's just gonna be like, oh, okay, I'll get on with that. You kind of have to make him think that he's doing something fun, like the pole work. And then if it's his decision to knuckle down and do work, that's absolutely fine, isn't it, Ari? He's a bit like a mare. I think that's how I'm gonna have to treat you. But overall, not a bad session. He did come round, especially once I did the raised poles. Not that they're raised anymore. 
Um, but yeah, that's kind of the progress where we're at with our E. Not really the best vlog, guys, but it's a very accurate representation of what it's like working with lovely youngsters. So we'll let you guys see where we're at. Anyway, thanks for watching. Live, laugh, love you, and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.